God is so good. How about that? Is that working now? Yes, sir. Y'all turn to the book of Job. Job? Job. Y'all turn to the book of Job and say, get a job. Get here. Turn to the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 13. Tuscaloosa came to a fork in the road and he stopped. There was no sign indicating which route went where, so he spotted the boy by the road and he yelled out, Hey kid, does it matter which road I take to Tuscaloosa? He said, Not to me, it don't. <laughs> I knew some of y'all would get it. Some of y'all would be riding down the road tomorrow and go, Oh, God damn, right. oh Amen. Let's just read this one first, and, then, and I'm going to let you sit this time because I'm going to read, I'm going to read right much of Job just to get a start of it. Uh, Job chapter 13, verse 15. There's been several times in my life I can think of where I was asking for God to work a miracle and work it in my idea and in my time. I know nobody else has ever done that. We got it all figured out. We got all the plans made. We got everything all worked out. Well, God, if you can just do this according to my plan, everything will be fine. And then you find out when the bottom falls out that he's not so much concerned with your plan as he is with his plan. He's concerned with what you're thinking. But he's not concerned with following what you're thinking as much as he's concerned with following. Matter of fact, the Bible says we can choose our path, but he still plots the way. We can, we can get everything all lined up, but God's still in control no matter what. Even when we do it right, when we do it wrong, God's still able. He takes all my goods, all things I'm doing good, and he uses it for his glory. He takes all my bad, all my mistakes, all my sin, all my stupidity. I know I said stupidity. But sometimes I look back and say, how in the world could I have done that? Amen. I know I still am the only one talking to myself. I'm going to turn my, I'm gonna turn my chair around and just talk. Okay. <laughs> <Y 'all, laughs> okay. But I have learned, I can think of multiple times in my life, and I have to be honest with you, now is one of them. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Some of y'all right now, this is some of your prayer. If it didn't, it needs to be if you're going through something and you can't figure out what's going on. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Let me read it one more time. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Amen? Sometimes you just got to pull yourself up by the bootstring. Keep on going. Amen? Amen? We really don't make sense. Lord, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for all that you do for us. We thank you, God, that, that you've got this, Lord. We thank you, God, that no matter what, you've got this. And we know, God, that you're in total control. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and to anoint to make a way where there is no way. And Father, I ask you to touch our hearts and our minds and help us, God, glean something from today's service that will not only impact this week, but will impact our lives. Lord, in the name of Jesus, your word is our power. Your word is our building blocks. And as we keep taking in the word and keep building on it, we get stronger and stronger and a foundation gets built around us that's unbreakable and unstoppable. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Even when we got to say, Lord, though you slay me, I'll trust you. Lord, let us have that kind of faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said? 
Amen. So today I'm going to talk, I say for a few minutes, I have no idea how long it's going to be, uh, handling your hurts. How many's ever had hurts that you deserved? How many's ever had hurts that you did not deserve? How many times have you had to go through one, one of each or more of each of them at the same time? It makes it kind of hard to figure out how to juggle. How do you take your life? How do you juggle? What do you do here? How do I save up enough strength to handle this while I'm too busy fighting over here? This is one I didn't deserve. I'm trying to get the strength of it. This one I didn't deserve and it's sapping my strength. Vice versa, on and on and on it goes. Well, how do you handle your hurts? Especially when they're undeserved. Get your Bibles out again in the book of Job. We're going to read a couple of chapters. I know it's a lot, but to get the whole gist, and I know many times we just go and start assuming everybody knows it, and we'll just do a, do a brief synopsis, but this is too good a stuff to go by without reading it. For chapter 1, verse 1, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. This is the oldest book in the Bible, by the way. I mean, I know Genesis is the oldest time in the Bible, but this is the oldest book in the Bible, okay? This is, this is what was written first, all right? Can you imagine this is the first one written? Wow. It's amazing that you're talking about pain, and it's the very first one, the oldest book in the Bible. So here we go. There was a man in the land of us, his name was Job, and the man was perfect and upright, meaning he, his, his spirit and his actions both please God. Why? Wow. His spirit and his actions. Sometimes we've got our spirit going, but our actions don't necessarily match. Uh, again, I know I'm the only one. You ride down the road and somebody's in front of you. Remember John Hankey talked one time. He said he was riding down the road and there was an old lady in front of him at the stoplight. And she was looking up through the light this through the window, or through, the, through the steering wheel. And the light was green and she stopped. And said so she looked up. While she was looking up, the light turned yellow, so she stayed there. And she looked back down. The light turned green again, and by the time she looked up, it had turned yellow. And it goes back down as it goes red, and he started honking his horn. He's honking his horn at this lady and honking at her. She's still going up and down. And he finally hollered, Move it or lose it, lady! And turned beside him, one of his church members was in the car next to him. Sometimes, although our spirit is willing, our flesh is weak. Amen? Uh, uh, we got all together, but we still can't handle everything. Because right, when Job was one of those, and his, his actions matched his spirit and vice versa. He feared God, and he eschewed evil. He pushed evil. He didn't have anything to do with evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Uh, you need prayer if you got seven sons and three daughters. And the substance was also 7,000 sheep and 300 or 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, which is, is actually uh, uh, 10, 10 uh, or 1,000, excuse me, okay? Uh, uh, 500 she asses and a very great household. So this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Y'all just say he was awesome. Awesome before God and man. Amen. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And, and it was so that the day of their feasting was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that, that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continue. Remember now, this is the oldest book in the Bible. He, this book here... Remember, he doesn't know about grace like we know about it. Okay? He, he knows about the animal sacrifices because it was tradition passed down about Adam and Eve in the garden and stuff. But Moses was the one that put it in book form. So that was all talked about. And he knew about, he knew about the sacrifices. He knew about this. And so in his limited understanding of the whole situation, because God wasn't slaying him, Satan was. Trying to. And, and he didn't know about grace as the cross. But he knew that sacrifice. So he made sacrifices for his kids. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Some of y'all in here might not even realize it. But the reason you're going through some of your stuff right now is not because you've done bad. It's because you've done good. And 
and Satan, you're on his hit list. All right? If Satan's not messing with you today, you need to come up here and let me pray for you. Because something's wrong. All right? So now, there's none like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Job fears you for nothing. Has he not, have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? Has thou blessed the work of his hands and his substance has increased in the land? But put forth thine hand now and touch all that thou hast, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth in the presence, from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses were feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. Yet while he was speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burnt upon up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, I mean, they're just coming. They're coming. Bam, 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 bam. Have you ever been scared to pick up your phone because they just keep coming? You're scared to pick up the text messages because they just keep coming? And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans made out three, made three bands of made out three bands and fell upon the camels and carried them away. Yea, they slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and went in his mouth and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return thither. And the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not and nor charged God foolishly. The last time I read this whole chapter like this, I was standing up here and while I'm reading it, somebody walks out the back door, comes in the back door and says, There's a Jeep turned upside down and there's a fire down here at Blunt's Creek. And we knew what that was. And God's timing is impeccable because I just read this. And then we find out about the BJ and his wreck. It's amazing how God does things. And I again I'm doing this and I'm reading I'm looking back at the daughter who's lost 70 pounds, and she's doing great, but this is a deadly disease, and they're just still trying to figure all this stuff out. I look back at her, and she gets more precious every day because of stuff like this. And you know what? you got to understand, again, just what Job said. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away, but I am not going to sin or do something stupid and foolish because of this. That weren't enough. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also to them to present themselves before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holds fast his integrity, and, and again, thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all the man hath he will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet and to his crown. And he took a, a pot shed to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. <coughs> this sent his wife unto him, Dost thou uh, retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Why shall we receive good of the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. In other words, he, he kept himself again upright before God. Now, now let me just tell you this. A, a surgeon looked at what was going on 
when it's described what Satan, I mean, what uh, Job was going on, going through, and they named off the disease, and it said that Job, his body would have been riddled with pain, that he would have had temperatures of 105 and higher. And the only way to get some relief was to take that, break a pot, make it like a razor, and shave off the boils from his body to try to get a little bit of relief. So you can imagine 105, temperatures of 105, your body's burning, these sores are on you, they're eating you up, you feel like you've got a, a cancer all over your body on the outside, you're trying to get rid of this thing going on. That's what's going on in Job's life. Now remember, Job did not, and I've got to repeat this, Job did not deserve A man of God, a powerful man of God, a blessed man of God. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt like that? I just wanted to, to stop the pain. To yank his heart out. There's a lot of people around here you think they're cold and they're ruthless. And it's not that they're cold and ruthless. It's not that they're mean. They just want the pain to stop. And a way to stop the pain is just to become numb. That's it. Like you take ice, you've got to burn. You take that hand that's burning, you can hold ice in that hand that's burning, and you'll feel some relief. The same way, when they pull that, they just put ice in their chest, and they just get callous. They just want the pain to stop. People that commit suicide, most of the time somebody commits suicide, if you see their note, most of the time if they leave a note, it says, I just wanted the pain. Number one thing said. I just wanted things to just, I can't take it. The pain is just unbearable. We see, here he is, and it can be us too. What do you do when life hurts? You play by the rules. You've done everything that was expected. You've done it before God. You've worshipped Him. You've offered your body as a living sacrifice unto Him. You're working for him. You've tithed. You've offered all kinds of stuff. You've helped those that are hurting. You've done everything within your power. You've done what is expected. You lived in a responsible or lived a responsible life or lifestyle. But no matter what you did, the bottom still drops out. <laughs> what happens? You've crossed all your T's. You've dotted all your I's. You've lived before God a godly life. You've done everything you were supposed to do. You're a model Christian. You're a model child of God. But yet the bottom still falls out. Well, what do you do? You see, you see, uh, 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 we can get hurt in so, so many ways. You're going along, everything's going fine. You get that phone call, you know, uh, uh, Job, of course, he had the messenger sent to him, but it's kind of like us. You pick up the phone and you hear, well, well, you just had this problem. You just lost all your cattle. Well, now you've lost all your sheep. Guess what? Now you've lost all your oxen. Or well, now you've lost all your kids. You're scared to pick the phone up anymore. Again, you just wanted to stop. So let me tell you something. Here, watch this. Look. Though he slay me, the Christian life is not a series of happy stories. Sometimes they get downright ugly. Think about your own life now. It would be nice if we could just walk around, you know, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, you know, but you know what? The people that have never been through anything, honestly, they still have the victory. If you're a Christian, you've got the victory. But if you've never been through anything, it's a shallow victory. It's when you've been through something and you come out on top. That's when the victory is sweet and it gets sweeter and sweeter. And that's when the, the greater the challenge, the greater the victory. Amen? So, so again, we all, we all uh, get hurt in many ways. And so, so how, how uh, do we get hurt? Well, it may be an illness, an injustice. We didn't deserve it. Somebody unfairly criticizing us, just pure out of person, somebody standing against us. Or we have a loss, or we have stress, or uh, uh, we have suffering. I had somebody coming from coming from uh, uh, the other side of the state to see Bethany from 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 Mass, and uh, they called me and said we'll be there in an hour, and uh, within 30 minutes we get another phone call. 
I said, what's wrong? And the guy was talking kind of slurred. And I said, what is wrong, bro? He said, I'm turning around and going back home. And I said, what's going on? He said, I just passed by the exit. I didn't even see it. I'm not even sure where I'm at right now. And I said, hold on, I'll go get you. He said, no, I, I know where home's at. I'm going home now. So he turned around. He got home and said, I'll call you when I get there. So he called and he went to the doctor and his sugar had dropped. He's a diabetic. His sugar had dropped. But not only was it sugar, but stress. And so, so here he is having this problem. It's amazing. You know, he's on the way to do something good for Bethany. He's on the way to do something good to show love to Bethany, driving all the way from Greensburg to come say hello. To come spend 15, 20 minutes with her. Wow. It's a mass amazing. You know, and, and on the way to do something great, he has to turn around and go back home. So, of course, he came the next day. But again, you got all this stuff going against you. See, so when this stuff starts happening, illnesses and injustice, criticism, when all this stuff starts happening uh, uh, in our life, we begin to uh, feel confused, even disappointed. I'm going to say a very bold statement. And if y'all will stop and think about it for a minute, you find that it's not such a bold statement, but it's one that many people wouldn't say. There's times I'm going to be confused and disappointed with my surroundings and confused and disappointed with other people. There's times I've been confused and disappointed with God. I can be all holy, holy, holy and go, no, 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 I have. Why are you being disappointed? Because I was expecting one thing and got another. That is, that's not a bad thing. It's not like I'm cursing him. It's just I expected God to move in this situation and he didn't. And so that result disappointed me. I'm, what happened? I thought we were doing this right. Joshua did that. When Joshua went there and got a whip to come back and said, Whoa! We've been tearing everybody up. And now all of a sudden we go to AI and we get whipped by a little bitty. We need to, we're just going to bring our little bitty. The, 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 just the, the do crew was going to take care of this. And they got whipped. And guys died. So again, there's times you're confused, you're disappointed, and, and you know that Job felt this way, yet he kept his faith in all of it. Through his suffering, he said, though he slay me, I will trust him. Remember, in his mind, he saw God as the creator and the destroyer. Who's the destroyer? Satan. Now, God did step out of the way and give him permission, but he could not touch Job without God's permission. But once God backed out of the way, he let them. So, so, so again, he had no idea about the spiritual battle going on. He had no idea about what was going on with God and with, with, with Satan and how God was bragging on Job. He didn't feel like he was bragging on him. You know, I'm telling you, sometimes I want to say, God, if you're bragging on me, I wish you'd quit. Amen. So, so, so here, here again, here, here, here we're going we're to get ready to go through this quickly. I'm not going to go to do a very strong uh, extra Jesus in the book of Job. I'm just going to breeze over through it. Of course, there was a man laying in the Bible. His name was Job, and the man was blameless and upright. I just put some of them up here so you could see it uh, in a different kind of wording. Uh, who feared God and, and turned away from evil. And, and the Lord said unto Satan, that you consider my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. And again, he says it again uh, in verse chapter 1 and in chapter 2. So, so watch this. How did Job handle these hurts? I can tell you right now before you lose it or forget it or miss it, Job did not handle everything perfectly. Because God corrected him. But Job handled them faithfully and through faith. And Job handled them in a way that they listened. In the long run, please God so much, there's a book written about it. Everybody can see this. So I'm going to tell you, no matter what you're going through, you think, well, I, I say, he handled it perfectly. I guarantee you there's not a person in here that handled it perfectly. Amen? You show me the one that handled it perfectly, and I'll show you the next time he has it. Look, the next time it comes, see if he handles it perfectly. There's going to be a time when you snap. I snapped. I was in the hospital that day when they talked about they had stopped Bethany's chemo. And... 
I told y'all about that. I've been sleeping with my head under the covers. I just washed my hair, and because the room had smelled so bad, I had to sit, uh, and put the head over my, uh, the covers over my head, so my hair was sticking straight up, all like Jack Nicholson. <coughs> and the doctor, and the nurse come in, and I said, uh, "Have you given Beth here?" And I've been giving Beth here chemotherapy out of a sandwich bag because that's what the doctor told me to do. The nurse said, "We can't give her chemotherapy out of a sandwich bag. We've got to give it to her out of a bottle." I said, I just did what the doctor said. They said, we need the bottle. I said, well, hold on there, home slice. I'll go get them. So I go home. I rush home. I get the bottles and come back and sit there. That was the last time we saw those bottles. When we were dismissed, it took them an hour. Still couldn't find them. Finally, another hour or two, they found Bethany's $12,000 worth of chemo. And that's for one month. She has three months of it. So, so here we go. I wake up and I said, okay, you got your bottles, don't you give her a chemo? And they said, no, we didn't give her a chemo this morning. They told us that she had to have it. And I said, why haven't you? And they said, well, we couldn't verify the bottles. And I said, can I tell you something? Look, can I tell you something? Somebody right here needs to get their act together because I got this chemo from this place right downstairs. You understand that? And they're going, yes, sir, Mr. Lynn. Yeah. I said, she needs this chemotherapy. Why? Who dropped the ball? And they said, well, we couldn't verify it. I said, who dropped the ball? And finally, the doctor came in and said, hold on, Mr. Linton, here's the problem. Is her liver enzymes are up to about 20 times, and it can only be up about two times, and so it would kill her to give her this chemo. I said, well, why didn't you tell me that to start with? They said they couldn't verify it. I said, so I lost all my cool points this morning because somebody told me the wrong thing. And then when Linda came in, the doctor said, you ought to see your husband this morning. Who dropped the ball? Now, you know, I like to say I handled it all perfectly. And like Fonz, I stopped and went, <sighs> but guess what? We're all human. And when you're fighting something that serious, you don't play. And so, again, they said they understood. And even at the end, they told me, said, we're so glad you're here. And I was thinking, yeah, really, this morning you weren't. All right, so here we go. What did Job do? I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to give you some. I'm not going to give you the one, two, three steps because guess what? There is no one, two, three steps how to handle hurts. I'm going to give you a roundabout that you have to decide. It's not cherry picking that you pick one, two, or three, or you pick three out of five. You still need to do all of this, but you may have to do it in a different way because you may be hurt in a different way. But about how did he handle his hurt? And I will show you. The very first thing he did was so. So awesome. I love it. The very first thing he did was, look, I love this. Don't tell God how, how you have a big problem. Tell your problem you have a big God. Amen. Bethany tells me that every day. Daddy, we got a big God. He's got this. Daddy, we got a big God. He's got this. Daddy, I win, any, I win either way. We got this, Dad. God's got this. I go, I know, dear. I know. Okay. Matter of fact, she's got me. The more she talks, the more I feel like a heathen. Okay. So here we go. What did he do? The, the first thing that he did was he reconnected with God. The Bible tells us very strongly here. It says, it says that, watch this now, this is so cool. First thing he did was worship. He reconnected to God. He got to his feet, he ripped his robe, he shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshiped. It said, naked I came from mother's womb, naked. I return to the womb or to the womb of the earth. God gives and God takes. God's name, God's name be ever blessed first. Watch this now. He got up. He refused to wallow in his pain. If you're hurt, whether it's deserved or undeserved, if you can learn not to wallow in it. You know, I used to wonder why do pigs always have pig styles and why they always wallow everywhere they go and why they got all this mud stuff. You know, pigs don't have sweat glands. And so this is how they stay cool. 
Well, you know what? We got spiritual sweat glands. We ain't got to wallow. Bethany, I've never. Only one time. One time. She questioned the doctor. One time. And that was, she said, are you trying to tell me I've got cancer? And the doctor says, I don't know, dear. We were trying to figure this out. This is before her biopsy. And I saw a tear, one tear in her eye. And from that time on, it's been, God's got this. Daddy, we're not going to lay down and wallow in this. Daddy, we're going to move on. Daddy, we're going to, God's got this. Let's go. Let's go. <coughs> See, he got up. He refused to wallow in his pain. He got to his feet, ripped his robe, shaved his head, fell to the ground and worshiped. So watch this. Secondly, he got beyond himself. We can have a whole lot better experience, period, in church and period in our lives if we get over us. I got to say that one more time. If we can learn to get over us, well, I don't quite like the way he did that today. I don't like the way they said that to me. And I don't like the way they handled that. Well, you know what? If they're trying to worship God, they're trying to give, give it to God. How about just say, you know what? Thank God somebody's trying to worship you, God. Amen. Thank you, God, that somebody's got enough gumption in them not just to lay there and play dead, but to get up and they're doing something. Amen. So again, here it goes. Number one, he got up. He refused to wallow in his pain. Number two... He shaved his head. He got beyond himself. I'm going to stop on this next one and we'll finish it next week. I just feel very strongly to stop right here, so I'm going to stop. I got a lot more to go, but I want to stop because this has got this has got to sink in. And number three, he fell to the ground and worshiped. He got in a position to receive from God. You see, it's very easy when you get hurt and you get mad at God. How many times have people stopped coming to church because they got hurt and thought God had dropped the ball on them? How many times have people worshiped God until something happened and all of a sudden now they stop worshiping Him because they say, God, you could have done something about this. I think about it all the time, God, you could have done something. You know, uh, uh, back, back when the doctors were telling us it was just a little bitty uh, a cyst or, or might be a little bitty hernia or just a tear in the skin, uh, an infection, and we're going to get rid of it. And the whole time it was melanoma. By the time they figured it out, it had already spread from here to here, and it was already engulfed in her intestines. By the time those doctors kept playing around, and then the surgeon went in and burnt, tried to burn it out twice. And again, I don't know what this is. And the nurse practitioner is the one that found it. You know, I look back at that. When they finally tell us, you know, she's got metastat uh, 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 metast metastasized melanoma. It, it, it's bad. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's bad stuff. It's really, 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 really bad. And she really says something now. I'm not talking about next week. Now. And I'm thinking, all this time, these six months we played around with these doctors, and, and nobody spotted it? And then I thought to myself, well, why, why didn't I do something about it? Why, why, didn't, why didn't I do something? But again, I can get mad at God. I can get mad at the doctors. I can get mad at whoever. Or I can just trust God and say, God, you got this. I'm going to trust you. I don't understand it. But I'm going to get up. I'm not going to lay here and waller. Because I was watching my daughter. She's not wallering. And I get beyond myself. It's not about me, period, at all. You know, like today when Bethany said, it was so funny when I said, girl, you're, I see you sitting there and you're looking like you're having pain. Of course, I had a pain pill in my pocket. The other day she said, didn't really, really hurt Tuesday night. So I reached in my pocket and I pulled out a pain pill and a lifesaver. I said, which one do you want? She said, Dad, you're not funny. I said, okay, take the pain pill. But then over, she said, when she said, I said, Bethany, you want to go sit down? She says, I am sitting down, Dad. You know what? If I'd, have taken, if I'd have taken that personal, it could have made me mad. It didn't make me mad at all. I laughed. But if I'd have been one of those kind of people to take everything personal, that, that could have made me mad because, because I was thinking, I was trying to look out for her to get her out of here so she wouldn't have to sit up here on, on this. She could be sitting on a soft pew. But you know what? Again, you got to get beyond self. Good Lord. Move beyond you. A lot of our whole problems stop we can learn to get beyond us. Quit taking things so seriously. Quit taking ourselves so seriously. Quit, quit, quit beating up on people because they don't look like us or smell like us or act like us. And number three, 
got a position to receive. He didn't understand. He thought God was actually just being mean to him. But you know what he said? He said, no matter what, I'm still going to worship you, God. Wow. I remember riding down the road after my wife died. And I said the same thing. I remember when my mother died, I said the same thing. Nick and I came from your womb. My mom was moving, Nick and I am going back. Lord, you got this. I'm going to trust you. And about every morning, I said the same thing with Bethany. God, you got this. I'm going to trust you. Get in a position to receive from God because God is our source. God has all the answers. God knows exactly what's going on. Get yourself in a position. When you've been hurt and you're disappointed and even disappointed at God, get yourself in a position where you can receive from God and watch what will happen. BJ, come on up here, brother. We're going to stop right here. We all get hurt from time to time. That's life. You got mighty army this morning, you read it. The mighty army this morning said, when you can't see his God's hand, you can trust his heart. That was mighty army. I was sending something else this morning. I had planned for something else, but last night I was working on this till about 2 30 this morning because life was just moving so fast yesterday. And it was just one thing after another, one thing after another. And it just never stopped. So finally around 12 o'clock, things slowed down. And so I got a chance to work. Some of us right now, my father, everybody might like you. Bow your head. Everybody bow your head. Don't look around. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get some relief here. One way to get relief from things is to go ahead and admit it. Get it out. And once you get it out, then you can deal with it. But as long as you hold it inside, you can't deal with it. And it just eats at you like a cancer. I know there's a lot of people that have got things in here that you wish you weren't going through. There's things you may have deserved and brought on yourself. There's things that you have not deserved and have not brought on yourself. But it's still painful no matter what. No matter, no matter how. It's very painful and it hurts. First thing he did was he got up. He refused to wallow in his pain. But every head bowed and every eye closed. We're going to ask about these three things. If you're going to do something right now and, and it hurts, I mean hurts. Have you found a way to get up anyway? To not wallow in this, but to get up anyway. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're having a problem with this, the beginning of the cure is going to be your admission to this. But nobody else is looking around. We just like to hand up and say, you know, I'm having a little problem here. I seem to stay down with this. It's keeping me down. I find myself kind of wallowing in it. I find myself uh, being, being uh, uh, consumed by this. And it weighs heavy on my mind. And it drags me down all the time. And I just can't seem to get up. I seem to keep laying in it. And I need God to help me. But nobody looking around. Just can you slide that hand up and say, pray for me. Pray for me. 
Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, you know the problem. You know the answer. And God, I thank you, Lord, that no matter what we're doing, no matter how bad things get, you're still in control. I know, God, that you still got this. You've not dropped the ball. You have not forgot. You've got everything together still. You're not trying to figure out how to fix this. <coughs> In your mind, God, it's already fixed. We just got to get to that position, that timeline. Because our timeline and your timeline are different. Touch right now. Help us, God, to get up. Move forward, not backwards. Get up, move forward, not stay still. And watch you do something in our life. Number two. When he ripped his robe and he shaved his head, otherwise he got beyond himself. He moved beyond him. He did no longer become the, although he was the target, he refused to be the subject. Do you hear what I'm saying? Even though he was the target, he refused to be the subject. He was going to move forward. And watch what God will do in his life. If you're having a hard time, not only just getting up, but you're having a hard time moving beyond self. Again, not to embarrass anybody. Everybody keep your head down. Put your, you know, keep your eyes closed. And when you say, would you put that hand up? Remember, that's the first part of this healing process. Put the hands out. I just can't get beyond myself. I seem to be the subject of this thing. I can't, I can't seem to get beyond what I'm going through, and it just seems to be tearing me apart on the inside. I can't take it. Touch them, Lord. Touch them right now. Well, let them see and know, Lord, that they, although they are, are, are being hit, if they can look beyond and not see themselves as the subject, although they are the target, and look to you, and know that although the timelines are different, you got this, and there's going to be a time when things are going to change. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch them. Lord, to bless them. To let them see, Lord, that you've got this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you for that. And then finally, has the thing that you're going through tried to rob you of your faith? Have you even allowed it to try to rob your faith? Has it come to you that God doesn't love you like he loves anybody else? That, that, that God has his favorites and his specials and you're not one of them. And that your whole life is going to be nothing but misery because God doesn't even see you as his child like he sees everybody else. That's what Satan wants to do in our life. When quite the opposite is true. Job was the best man on the earth. He was the best man around. He was blessed coming in and going out. His boss surroundings were blessed. There was a hedge about him. <coughs> Satan couldn't even touch anything he had. It's when God let down the hedges. That's when, when, when all hell started breaking loose. Literally. It wasn't because of Satan doing bad. It's because of Satan doing good. So let me ask right now. Have you gone through something and the pain is so bad that Satan is trying to move you from a position of receiving from God, even blaming God for this, versus celebrating God in the middle of it? Has he got you to move out of, out of a position to receive, to move away from God instead of to him? But you just slide that hand up, just, just gently slide it up, Lord. Sometimes it's hard to understand. Sometimes it's hard to even get it in our mind. But God, we know you got it. You've had it all before. And I thank you. And I thank you. And I thank you. Even though I don't understand it, though you slay me, I will trust you.
Every day. 